everybody. This is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the Mattel Wrestling WWE Basic Series 102 Drake Maverick action figure. I believe this is his first release this guy has gotten. As the package says, first time in the line. What appealed to me about this guy, he's in sort of a military looking outfit. He's in the military green colors. I like it. They've made a bunch of figures like this before. The shield guys in their black sort of SWAT looking outfits. I think this guy will make a great mercenary or military figure. So let's go check out the packaging here. Drake Maverick. You can see him in here. He's got boots, knee pads, military green outfit, a bunch of pouches and pockets on his vest area. Little name tag here says Maverick. You can see his face. First time in the line, age of six plus, wrestling, series 102. Nothing really going on at the bottom there. Backside here, you can see the rest of the wave. I'm very interested in getting this Baron Corbin figure. The rest of it is probably a pass for my uses. And here's the barcode in case anybody needs it. So with no further ado, let's open him up. All right, now that we got the figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out, and that was kind of a joke, as he comes with no accessories. But don't forget, this is a Mattel WWE basic figure. They retail at under $10. They have less articulation, and very often, no accessories whatsoever. So a couple things about this figure. I actually ordered the black suited version from Amazon.com, and they sent me the green suited version. I didn't even know there was a green suited version. I'm sure I could have returned it to Amazon.com, but you know what? I liked it, and I wanted to get both of them once I found out there was a green one. So when I stumbled across this figure, first of all, it was cheap, prime shipping, less than $10. I thought this guy would make a great Bane mercenary for my Batman to beat up on. He'd make a great military soldier or SWAT officer. I actually bought two of the black versions and received two of the green versions. I thought to myself, I can just swap out a head and then have two SWAT or military or mercenary figures. So like I said before, I actually ordered two black ones from Amazon.com and received two green ones. And then I found out there were two different versions of this guy. So I went out about and found the black version at a Walmart store. My intent was to head swap and have a couple of different generic mercenary or military figures. So let's go ahead and check out the actual figure. So you can see his face here. I think his hair is sculpted very nicely. His face sculpt and paint is pretty good. He's got the stubble there. He's got the military kind of vest. Notice it says Maverick on the front. Sleeveless. One thing I definitely don't like about this guy, two fisted hands. That means he's not gonna be able to hold a gun unless I do some serious modifications. Get a little bit lower. He's got some pockets on his pants knee pads, and then some boots. Overall, I thought it was a pretty good, generic, military-looking guy. Notice the back here, AOP, Authors of Pain. He was with them with Acom and Razar. And then, of course, we got the black version. It is identical sculpt. You can even see Maverick on there, all painted in black. But this is the one that I preferred. I would have rather had two of these and one of the green one probably end up getting two of both, do some head swaps, having a few extra generic henchman figures. Another thing I wanted to mention about this figure is this guy's height. This figure is small. I got this guy and I was like, what the heck? What is up with the scaling in this wave? Here he is next to Baron Corbin, the only other figure in this wave that I had any interest in. This Baron Corbin I thought would be great for world building. He could be a civilian, mobster, some muscle, henchman, regular person, businessman, all kind of different uses. Both these guys are great for world building with my action figure collection. But look at the height difference between these two. It's more than an inch. I thought to myself, boy did Mattel screw the pooch on this one. They are not scaling their figures correctly with each other. Doing a little bit of research on Drake Maverick, it turns out he's unusually short of a wrestler. I believe he's five foot four, and Baird Corbin here is a pretty tall guy. That's a little bit disappointing for me, 
as this Drake Maverick figure will stand out like a sore thumb around my Bane mercenaries or military figures. So I went ahead and heated up some water, dipped the extra green Drake Maverick into it, heated it up, took his head off, took a head out of my fodder pile and popped it on there. So now this guy can be a different character in my action figure world. I don't think I'm really happy with using this Dean Ambrose head. I'll probably find something better, but this will work in the meantime. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at the figure, next let's check out the height of this guy. Like I said before, it's a pretty short action figure, a little bit shorter than I would have liked, but it represents a short character. So from bottom to top, this guy's sitting at about 6.1 inches, but wrestling figures are typically a little bit larger scale than the 6.0 inch scale. That translates to about 15 and a half centimeters. Next, let's check out this guy's articulation. So starting with his head here, of course it can rotate from side to side. It can look down about that far, up about that far, not too much there, ball joint under the head. It's got ball joint in the shoulders, as you can see there, then go out just about 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. Single jointed elbows. They can rotate at the top. His wrist can rotate around and it's hinged as well. Once again, disappointed with two fists. Traditional waist swivel. He's got basic articulation in the hip area. Go forward about that far. Back about that far. And that is it. Single jointed knees. Then go back a full 90 degrees. There's no swivel or anything. There is a rubber knee pad on top of the knee. And then his feet here. They can rotate above the boot and that is it. Next, let's check him out compared to some other action figures, starting off with some other wrestling figures. Here are both versions of Drake Maverick, as well as Baron Corbin, the only figures I'm interested in from series 102. Here he is next to Braun Strowman, both a basic version on the left and an elite version in the middle. Braun Strowman is Drake Maverick's best friend, more or less. There is a 16 inch difference between the two people, Reflected pretty well in the toys. Drake Maverick seems like maybe he's a little bit too short, perhaps. Here he is next to a recently released two-pack battle pack of Acom and Rezar. These guys are all in their uniforms when they were in the Authors of Pain Together, AOP. I thought this green Drake Maverick looked like he matched these guys perfectly. As you can see, AOP. AOP and AOP. Here he is next to a bunch of other versions of Acom and Rezar. These guys are huge, massive, great henchmen or muscle or thugs for action figure world building. I thought these two looked pretty good with the black version of Drake. Here he is next to a bunch of other wrestling figures that are in black, similar type military SWAT outfits. Most of these guys are from the wrestling group The Shield, which consisted of Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. I really didn't like Seth Rollins' head as it was like half blonde and half black, so I swapped it out with some other head and made a few different generic mercenary military type guys. All the figures in front of you are basic figures, except for the far left version of Roman Reigns. He's a WWE Elite. Here he is, next to several different Mattel WWE Elite figures. Here he is, next to some Mattel basic wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some Mattel wrestling female figures. We've got some basic figures on the left, and some Elite figures on the right. Here's Drake Maverick and Braun Strowman taking on the Uso brothers in a wrestling match. So I mentioned earlier possibly using him as a Bane mercenary or a military type of figure. Here's the two green ones I have next to a Mattel Movie Master Bane figure as well as some Mattel Multiverse Rick Flag figures. I put a bunch of different heads on the Rick Flag figure, got them for really really cheap and these are a bunch of soldiers working for Amanda Waller, like from the Suicide Squad movie, 
They also double up great as Bane mercenaries from Dark Knight Rises. These guys being short, intended for a larger scaled line of wrestling figures, fit in perfect with these heighted figures. Here he is, next to a couple of McFarlane Call of Duty action figures. These guys are military-like, and they scale up pretty nicely with this Drake Maverick. Here's the Drake Maverick that I took the head off, next to a bunch of NECA Colonial Marines. I took that extra Drake Maverick head and popped onto this Marine here. It looked better than the one that body was currently housing. Overall, not too bad on this guy. And the black version's outfit, I really do like it. He'd fit in great with these Expendables figures. He's just pretty gosh darn short. Next, let's check him out with some different various action figure lines from several different companies to see how he fits in both scale and style wise in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Here he is with a bunch of DST or Diamond Select toys. Here he is with some McFarlane toys action figures. Here he is next to some NECA figures. Here he is next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles action figures. And then here he is next to some Mezco 112th Cloth Soft Goods action figures. Here he is next to some of his Mattel brothers. These here are Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And now here he is with some Mafex figures. Here he is with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is with some SH Figure Arts action figures. Here he is with some Jazzwares figures. So overall, I'm going to say I like the figure. His overall biggest shortcoming is that he's too short. And that is accurate to the actual person in real life. This guy here is intended to be with your 6.5 or maybe a little bit taller action figures. As wrestling figures typically fit in almost with your 7 inch collection. But the fact that this guy is so short, he could be a short person with your 7 inch figures, or he could be pretty much a regular size figure with your 6 inch figures. His articulation is weak, but he has a very nice look to him. I like his military or mercenary outfit, works good for that purpose. Big time points going away for two fisted hands. Without being able to give these guys guns for my unique purposes, really detracts from that. So if I were to rate this figure, I'm probably going to be 6 out of 10. I was going to give him a lower rating, but I'm very happy I found out that his shortness is intentional. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.